Okay, so um, welcome back. Let's go to our second and last talk of the day. It's a great pleasure to introduce my colleague, Professor Luna Lomonaco. Luna, as you will see, has been already in their early career at many places, right, Luna? So Luna is from Italy, did her undergrad in Pavoda, Padova, then went to Barcelona, PhD in Denmark. She was a faculty member at USP, which is a state university in Sao Paulo, and she joined us recently, 2020, time passed fast. She has many prizes, the, to mention a few, the L'Oreal Prize, which is for women in science, and she got it through mathematics. She got also a very nice prize by SBM of best paper by, say, young and established mathematicians here in Brazil. She's actually the first woman to receive that prize, very important. She has a very nice grant, which is very nice from Serra Pileira, which is this foundation that gives prizes, a prize from Umalca, which is our South American math, um, uh, Latin American and Caribbean um, um, math union. And she has recently also became an ICTP, Simon's associate, right? And maybe I should say too, it's not on my list, also a very important um, honor and thing that I learned yesterday, a recent mom. So with all this work, <laughs> congratulations to recent mom just three months ago, so Luna. It's the most important one. <laughs> That's, I, was, uh, I was waiting for that, like as we say in volleyball, right? I lift the ball, <laughs> levanta for the spike, very important spike. So here is a souvenir and for Thank speaks, you very much. Please, so Luna will talk on modular mandel process. Please Luna. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the great introduction, for the invitation. It's a honor being a part of IMPA and being part of its 70 years old celebration. And today I'm going to speak about the modular Mandelbrot set. Uh, the, mod the modular Mandelbrot set is this guy. and uh, it determines the behavior of a family of correspondences that uh, encodes both the behavior of quadratic rational maps and the modular group. So through this talk, we're going to speak about the dynamics of rational maps on the Riemann sphere. We're going to speak about the dynamics of the modular group and how these two words can be combined together, can be made into a single object, which is holomorphic correspondence, which of course I will tell you what it is. Okay, ah, I should say that this talk is based on joint work with Sean Bullet. from Queen Mary University of London. Uh, and actually on some work of Sean with Chris Penrose uh, uh, that started about 30 years ago. I was uh, in primary school at, at that time. So it's a very long story. Okay, let's go. Let's start speaking about rational maps on the Riemann sphere. If we have a rational map and we start iterating it, on the Riemann sphere, this iteration uh, gives us a partition of the Riemann sphere into two completely invariant subsets. A set opa, where the orbits all go together, all the points under iteration goes together. Uh, technically, we say this is the sets where the family of iterates is equicontinuous or normal, uh, equivalently, on a neighborhood, and its complement. The set of normality is called the Fatu set, and the complement is called the Julia set. Uh, if our rational map has agreed at least two our Julia set is not empty. And uh, 
then we are mostly interested in rational maps of degree at least two. And probably the easiest one, the easiest ex uh, example is Q of zeta, zeta square. If we start iterating points uh, of the Riemann sphere under zeta square, what happens? Well, if we are in the unit disk, if the modulus of our point is less than one, and we start taking the square, then the modulus becomes smaller. And if we square, the modulus becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And all these points inside the unit disk, they all converge to zero, which is fixed, zero squared is zero, and is attracting. On the other hand, if we start iterating points with modulus bigger than one, uh, this is the complement of the, un the closed unit disk, the modulus become bigger after uh, zeta square. And, the module, and if we iterate again, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually, they all go converge to infinity. So uh, the unit disk uh, and the complement of the closed unit disk are the FATU set for this map, the two different connected components. And the Julia set is the unit circle. If we take a neighborhood of any points on the unit circle, they have different dynamics. If we take a neighborhood of one, for example, we have that one is fixed, one plus epsilon goes to infinity, uh, one minus epsilon goes to zero, and uh, so on. Okay. Let's change word, and let's enter the word of Kleinian groups. Kleinian groups are discrete subgroups of PSL to C. Uh, and we if we start looking at the action of a Kleinian group G on the Riemann sphere, we also see that this gives us a partition of the Riemann sphere into two invariant objects. The set of normality, where the elements of the group form a normal family, which is in this case is called the ordinary set, and its complement, which is in this case is called the limit set. And in this, case, uh, in this talk, uh, we're interested in one particular climbing group, which is the modular group, which is the one uh, is PSL2Z, and is the one with generator alpha of zeta, zeta plus one, and beta of zeta, zeta over one plus zeta. And here we see the tessellation of the modular group. The ordinary set is the upper half plane and the lower half plane, and the limit set is the real line. Uh, we show just the upper half plane because what happens uh, upstairs and downstairs is the same, so. Okay, so as you probably have noticed, uh, these two words, two different words of uh, iteration of rational maps on the Riemann sphere and uh, uh, finitely generated Kleinian groups are not that different. The iteration of both, the action of both on the Riemann sphere gives our partition into completely invariant subset. The set of normality, which in the case of rational maps is called the FATU set, and in the case of Kleinian groups is called the ordinary set, and it's chaotic complementary, which in case of rational maps is called the Julia set, and in the case of, this thing is, what, okay, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not that trivial to use. Let's say, uh, well, in case of climbing groups, uh, it's called the limit set. Uh, and there are a lot, and these are the, just the first similarities. And actually the fact that the action of climbing groups and uh, the action of rational maps are not that different is something that already Fatou, 100 years ago, realized. And that Sullivan started write it down precisely in the beginning of the 80s in what has been called the Sullivan Dictionary, which is a, a set of, a dictionary between the action of rational maps on one side and Kleinian groups on the other side. And uh, being inspired actually by a theorem, a big theorem in Kleinian groups, the Alford's finiteness theorem, 
Sullivan proved the no wandering domain theorem, which breathed, was a revolution in the one dimensional complex dynamics. But yeah, so uh, these two words are not that different. And here we are interested in can we combine them? Can we find actually an object that can be both at the same time? Uh, well, if we want an object that can be both a map and a group, we need to uh, get out the word of maps and the words of group because a map is not a group and a group is not a map. So we need to leave these two words and entering the word of holomorphic correspondences, which is an object that can be both. What is an holomorphic correspondence? Well, an holomorphic correspondence on the Riemann sphere is a multi-valued map defined by the zero of a polynomial. So, we have a polynomial in zeta and w, its zeros define an algebraic surface. Let's call it, well, p zeta w equals zero. And then we can consider the projection on the Riemann sphere where zeta lives, the projection on the Riemann sphere where w lives, and our holomorphic correspondence is the multi-valued map which associate to each zeta the correspondence w. For example, if my polynomial has degree two in zeta and degree two in w, then for each zeta here, we have two w that kills our polynomial. These are the images. And for each w here, we have two zeta that kills our polynomial. These are the pre-images. And this will define a two, two holomorphic correspondence. Every point has two images and two pre-images. And we start iterating this thing, and it's a big mess. So why am I telling you about this? Well, because as I was saying before, we can write both a rational map as a correspondence and a Kleinian group as a correspondence. For writing a rational map as a correspondence, we just take as a polynomial the polynomial that kills our rational map. So if my rational map is a P of zeta over Q of zeta equal W, my polynomial is going to be W Q of zeta minus P of zeta. And if we have a Kleinian group with 45 generation, uh, generators, we just take as a polynomial the polynomial, uh, the, the one that kills each generator of the modular group. So uh, if we have a rational map of degree 45, this gives us a 45 to one holomorphic correspondence. Well, if we have uh, a climbing group with 45 generation, sorry, generators, <laughs> this gives us a 45 to 45 holomorphic correspondence. Okay. So a correspondence can be a group, can be a rational maps, can be both at the same time. This is the question. And uh, in technical words, this, we will say, can we mate these two words into a quadratic, uh, into a holomorphic correspondence? What is a mating? Well, a mating between object A and object B is an object C that behaves like A on a <laughs> invariant subset of the domain and like B on the complement. Matings exist in the world of rational maps. Mating two polynomials gives you a rational maps and actually started in the world of climbing groups. But here we are interested in mating rational maps with climbing groups. Is this possible? And why are we interested in it? Well, because I mean, if this is possible, this is a concrete example of <laughs> Sullivan Dictionary is, is something where the two theor theories actually touch together. 
Okay, but the first question is, sorry. Since a map is not a group and a group is not a map, it's are the dynamics of a group and a map combinable? And yes, they are. Uh, the modular group on, the, on its limit set, the real line, uh, its conjugate, its dynamics is conjugated to the dynamics of zeta square and its inverse on its Julia set. So, let's explain slowly. Exists a map, which is the Minkowski map, which conjugate on the um, negative real axis, uh, the generators of the modular group zeta plus one and zeta over zeta plus one with the action with the doubling map, zeta goes to two zeta. And zeta square on the unit circle, it's uh, z, uh, x goes to two x because uh, the modulus is always one and the argument gets double. So there is a map that conjugates uh, the modular group with zeta goes to two zeta on the negative real axis and with its inverse zeta goes to zeta over two on the positive real axis. This means that the modular group on its uh, real line, on its limit set, fits with zeta square and its inverse. So actually, the dynamics fit, and the mating is possible. And this was actually realized about, by Sean Bullet and Chris Penrose in the early 90s. And when they realized this, uh, they started realizing that a mating between the modular group and quadratic polynomial is possible. Because uh, the map zeta square encodes the dynamics of much more maps than just zeta square. What am I saying? Let's consider quadratic polynomials. Quadratic polynomial, the family of quadratic polynomial is zeta square plus c. It, we have infinity is fixed on the Riemann sphere and it's super attractive. If we have a point with a very big modulus and we square the plus C, the modulus becomes even bigger and it will go to infinity eventually. And we can define the set of points with bounded orbit, which is the field Julia set. It's, a, it's the complement of the basing of attraction of infinity. And the Julia set is the common boundary between the field Julia set and the basing of attraction of infinity. Here, I draw the field Julia set for different members of the quadratic family. Here is the field Julia set of uh, zeta goes to zeta square that we already saw a couple of slides ago. Here is for zeta plus zeta square plus one quarter, and this is for zeta square plus one quarter plus epsilon. And we can see that some are connected and some are not connected, and we can consider the set of parameters for which the field Julia set is connected, which is called the connectedness locus, which in this case is the Vanderbilt set, this guy. So, Zero belongs to the Mandelbrot set, it's here inside, the one quarter also, it's the cusp. And one quarter plus epsilon, it's outside the Mandelbrot set. Okay, but I was telling you that uh, zeta square encodes the dynamics of more maps than zeta square, why? Well, because if we are in a neighborhood of infinity, uh, the plus C, is not very important. 
I mean, the dynamics, it's really zeta square. And this is something that was uh, figured out already in the 19th century by Butcher. And actually, if our field Julia set is connected and locally connected, uh, we can prove that the dynamics of our quadratic polynomial outside our field Julia set is zeta square. And if, it, and if we have local connectivity also on the Julia set. Well, here it's zeta square, but here, this guy is locally connected. And on the boundary, the dynamics is the dynamics of zeta square. So, what they did here works not, not just with the map zeta square, but with all the quadratic family. So, uh, the dynamics of the modular group and the dynamics of the quadratic family fit together. And when they realize it, they defined a mating between a quadratic polynomial and the modular group as a 2-2 holomorphic correspondence uh, where we have an invariant open subset where the dynamics is conjugate conformally to the dynamics of the modular group. Appa. Okay. <laughs> and uh, on the complement, uh, we have a connected set, connected one one point, where on one side we have the dynamics of a quadratic polynomial, and on the other side, we have the dynamics of the inverse of our quadratic polynomial, as to fit here. And they made computations and they figured out that if these things existed, they live in this family of holomorphic correspondences. And they managed to prove uh, that in case of zeta square, uh, for a couple of parameters, actually you did have a mating, but they didn't really manage to um, prove that you have a lot of matings. But they made a lot of pictures. Well, let me first tell you that by construction, uh, each member of this family behave in such a way that there is a, a fixed line, opa, sorry, that in this case is the imaginary axis and which, okay, uh, we have a disk which is invariant by a F, by our correspondence, where our correspondence acts like a one to two map. And on the complement, our correspondence acts like a two to one map. And I'm telling you this uh, just for saying that we, uh, they define the limit set for these things as the intersection of the disk under the map on the positive plane and the intersection of the pre-image of this disk and the negative plane. And by, opa, and that for everybody in the family, zero is a parabolic fixed point. And I tell, told you this uh, just for uh, saying what limit set are and uh, uh, feel that I can show you pictures of limit set. And uh, these are picture of several limit set for this family for different uh, parameters A. And this is the connectedness locus for this family. The set of parameters A for which the limit set is connected. And when they saw the pictures, they conjectured that this family contains a mating between the modular group and every quadratic polynomial. And that the modular Mandelbrot set, this guy, it's homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. Let me show the picture of field Julia set of quadratic polynomials and the Mandelbrot set. The kind of, you can see a similarity. 
OK. So, uh, this uh, conjecture is from the 94, and since that, there has been uh, a lot of partial results for try to figure, uh, to try to prove that you have the modular group outside and a quadratic polynomial inside. And they failed to uh, manage to prove the conjecture for the whole family because every time they were uh, trying to uh, deal with the problem, they were breaking the parabolic fixed point. What I'm saying, we can consider the quadratic family as a hyperbolic family. Uh, in, uh, in complex dynamics, uh, we say that um, a map is hyperbolic if the critical point is attracted to uh, an attracting point. All the critical points are going to an attracting point. And if we have the quadratic family, we have that infinity is a critical point and is fixed and is super attracting. And if we are inside, uh, if you can prove that if the uh, field Julia set is disconnected, if you are outside the Mandelbrot set, your critical point goes to infinity. And uh, uh, actually the biggest conjecture in uh, uh, complex dynamics one dimensional is that the interior of the Mandelbrot set, uh, it's all made by hyperbolic maps. Uh, this gives, this implies that our uh, field Julia set is expanding and it doesn't match well with our modular group, which is strictly parabolic, is strong, strongly parabolic. So the, both the generator zeta plus one and zeta over zeta plus one are parabolic. Uh, and then we can consider another family of rational maps, which is a parabolic family, which is the family per one one, which is the family of quadratic rational map that we can write like zeta plus one over zeta plus a. For each, fam uh, for each member of the family, infinity is still fixed, but this time is parabolic. And uh, being parabolic, it has a basing of attraction which are all the points. A uh, parabolic point is a point that attracts on one side and repels on the other side. And uh, we can consider the basing of attraction as all these points that are attracting to our parabolic fixed point. And uh, we can consider, uh, we can define the field Julia set to be the complement of this basing of attraction. And here I drew the field Julia set of some members of the family per one one. Opa. And uh, again, we can uh, define the connectedness locus of the family. And in this case, it's called the, the parabolic Mandelbrot set, and it's this guy. And Carson Peterson and Pascal Hoche just uh, proved that the parabolic Mandelbrot set is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. Okay. So, uh, with Sean, we started working on the problem of matings and we started considering, okay, maybe these guys, opa, these correspondences are actually matings, but matings of a family of parabolic quadratic maps. 
and the modular group. And we defined a mating in a similar way. Let's say um, our correspondence is a mating if there is an open set invariant where it is a conformally conjugate opa, a, to the generator of the modular group on the upper half plane. And on the complement, we have a map of uh, the form zeta plus one over zeta plus a on one part of the limit set and its inverse on the other side. And we managed to prove that uh, for every a in the family, this correspondence is actually a mating between uh, some rational map in the family PA and the modular group. And also that there is a, a dynamical homeomorphism between the connectedness locus for the family of correspondences and the connectedness locus of the family per one one. Uh, and combining this with the work of Carson and Pascal, this gives us that actually the modular Mandelbrot set is homeomorphic to the Mandelbrot set. And here is a picture to um, illustrate the theorem. Uh, this is the modular Mandelbrot set. This is the parabolic Mandelbrot set. This guy, it's the center of the main hyperbolic component here. And this guy is upper. <laughs> well, the guy below is the center of the uh, main hyperbolic component uh, uh, of the parabolic Mandelbrot set. And uh, there is a quasi-conformal map that conjugate my correspondence on the neighborhood of this set to uh, the, uh, the map here on a neighborhood of this set. And the same works with this guy, which is the center of the main hyperbolic component and this guy uh, of the uh, hyperbolic components of period two and this guy. Uh, why is this so difficult to use? <laughs> Which is the center of the uh, hyperbolic component of period two. And for each actually point of the uh, connectedness locus. Uh, there is a, a homeomorphism between this guy and this guy, which sends each point here to the point here conjugated to. We have outside, we have the, um, outside we have the uh, modular group and inside we have the dynamics of per one one on this side and the inverse on this other side. Okay, this was just half an hour so I've been extremely fast so probably I've been very confusing. I apologize, I didn't notice I was speaking so fast. But this tells us that okay, that the modular Mandelbrot set is homeomorphic to the parabolic Mandelbrot set is, in, is homeomorphic to the standard Mandelbrot set. And with, uh, working with these correspondences, we developed a dynamical theory for these uh, objects. And this dynamical theory uh, parallels the dynamical theory that Duadi and Hubbard developed for quadratic polynomials. Uh, in particular, um, pa -pa -para, no. Ah, no. There is another one. Okay. Okay. 
if we consider, let's say that this is the limit set of one member of our family of <coughs> quadratic um, holomorphic correspondences. Uh, in order to prove the mating theorem, we prove that there is a map, a conformal map that goes from this set to the upper half plane, and which conjugates the two branches of our holomorphic correspondences to the two generators of the modular group, uh, alpha of zeta is zeta plus one, and beta of zeta is zeta over zeta plus one. Okay. Uh, call this map phi. And using this map, of course, we can pull back the structure here to our holomorphic correspondence. In particular, uh, on the upper half plane, we have geodesics. Uh, and we can prove that this map extends to the boundary of, well, the inverse of this map, actually. Let's call it phi. Extends uh, at the limit set at some particular point. In particular, um, the points which are the landing points of periodic geodesics. What I mean with this? If we consider a, a word in A and B, let's say beta, alpha, alpha. This is a matrix, a beta is zeta plus one, uh, this is zeta over zeta plus one, plus one, plus one. And this, this gives you pa, 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 ra, three zeta plus two over zeta plus one. Uh, to this word, we can associate a geodesics periodic of period three. Uh, how we do it? Uh, this uh, map has two fixed point, one attracting and one repelling. And the geodesic is the geodesic joining these two points. And we call it gamma of W. And let's say that uh, zeta plus and zeta minus are the fixed point under this guy. Then we can consider y plus to be um, the image beta of zeta plus, uh, y minus is beta of zeta minus. Uh, this gives us, and we consider the geodesic uh, between those points. W plus alpha of theta of W minus it's alpha of epsilon minus. And uh, then alpha of W plus it's a zeta plus by construction. So these things goes here. Mm. And then comes back. And uh, we can prove that uh, the part here, of course, has an image here, let's say pa, pa, with image here and image, let's say, here. And uh, the map actually extends at the ends. So periodic geodesics land, and the landing point are periodic points. We also prove that every um, 
repelling periodic point is the landing point of a periodic geodesic. And uh, using this, uh, we proved uh, something that is called Yoko's inequality, which is very roughly speaking an inequality uh, that tells you uh, that bounds how much you can repel if you are uh, repelling a periodic point uh, in terms of how much you turn. Of course, we are in the complex plane, so there are some points that repel like this, but most points repel like this, turning. And Yoko's inequality uh, bounds the one in terms of the other and has as a consequence uh, telling you how much big these limbs, which are the, well, let's make a drawing. If this is the modular Mandelbrot set, we see that there is a big part and, there, and then there are some limbs are called attached to it. And the Yoko's inequality tells you how big this can be. And uh, last thing I wanted to say is was just a word about the proof of the uh, theorem about uh, the homomorphism. And um, As we saw, every member of per one, one uh, for every member of it, uh, infinity is a parabolic fixed point, so it has a basing of attraction, and we defined the field Julia set as the complement of this basing of attraction. Uh, the, in order to prove that here, you have a member of per one, one what you do is basically uh, trashing this part and replacing it with the basing of attraction of this parabolic fixed point. Uh, you want to glue the basing of attraction of the parabolic fixed point here. And uh, I want uh, say much about that, but the only thing I want you to say is that a tr the trick for, using, uh, for doing it comes from by using or cycles. If we have, okay, uh, this is our uh, holomorphic correspondence, and we want to prove that here. It is conjugate to member of per one one. Here we have our parabolic fixed point. Here we have our parabolic fixed point. Here outside the field Julia set, we have the basing of attraction of our parabolic fixed point. So all my points go there. This is my dynamics. And we want to glue this basing here and the trick is gluing it using uh, or cycles. Here, around the parabolic fixed point, you have or cycles. Here also. And morally, you cut this basing and you're gluing here around on the Euro cycle. Uh, and this gives you, where did I put this? Here. A member of per one one. Uh, th this was as moral as it gets, but the punchline is this one. And uh, if you have uh, that for each guy here, 
you get one guy there, this in induces you a maps into parameter planes between the, the map that for each guy here associated your guy there. And you want to prove that this map is a homomorphism. And this is uh, how, I won't tell you how you prove it that this is a homomorphism because it's highly technical. Uh, but this is how, uh, the idea of how you prove it. And thank you very much. Thank you, Luna. So we're open for questions and comments. Dictionary? Well, it's a line more. Sorry? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't understand you. Okay, uh, repeat the question, maybe. Uh, I was wondering whether this point of view of looking at correspondences might be might help explain the dictionary, provide a reason for this dictionary between the groups. Yeah. Well, it's um, actually a concrete example of the dictionary. It's um, Uh, is the dictionary comes uh, into something, well, not uh, really physical because it's uh, um, a family of correspondences, but a, a concrete example of the fact that uh, this uh, dictionary is powerful and really uh, right. <laughs> Stone yet. Eh? Doesn't look like Rosetta Stone yet for. No. <laughs> yeah, so let me perhaps uh, uh, complement uh, Marcelo's question. So, do you think it, it will be possible to prove some of these similar features that appear in the dictionary uh, to have a unified proof uh, in both settings? Uh, uh, using this, these matings in, in some sense? Uh, I don't know, I didn't go so far. <laughs> but it's a very interesting question. Can, can you define Julia set and Patti set for correspondences? Does that make sense? Uh, well, yes, because now that you know you can define limit sets uh, as I told you before, and now you know that you have a, a conjugacy between this guy and this guy, you can define your Julia set as the, the preimage of the Julia set. And your field Julia set will be this guy. Uh, so uh, yes, I mean, this is. These are, the pictures are from this family, this one, that has been cooked up for uh, these things to be hopeful. And they, they, they cook, just a word, they cooked up it like thinking how it will be the modular group as a correspondence and then uh, modifying it in order to have possibility to have other dynamics there. Hi, Luna. Uh, Hi, Peter. We know a notion about structural instability for rational maps, and we have a notion of structural instability for Kleinian groups. We have this notion for a family of Holomorphic correspondences? Not yet, but not yet, but for this family, uh, I think one could use the proof of the of the homomorphism in order to uh, define it and basically pull back the, the notion in the imperial one to, to the family. Okay, thanks. 
Any more questions or comments? Or maybe people are hungry, I don't know. <laughs> so anyway, well, let's thank Luna again, and thank you for coming.